Thanks. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Can you turn it down, please? It's too loud. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Testing one, two. Can you turn it down a little bit? One, two, three, four, five, six. Turn it up a little bit. Testing one, two. One, two, three. Are we good? This sounds good to me. That sounds much better. Is that good? Can we thank the tech team for fixing that up? Thank you, tech team. <coughs> so first of all, when we go through live, I just want you to first of all know that some people look at me and say, wow, Nick, you're amazing. And I tell everyone, I'm just like you. We all go through the ups and downs and ups and downs. And we know that in life, we, we go through days of joy. We go through days of sadness. We go through days of, of success. And then we go through some days of failure. And my parents always told me that attitude is everything. And everything does start with an idea. Everything starts with a vision. But when you don't have vision, that's when it gets scary. There were times in my life where I felt like I had no vision, that I had no purpose, that I had nothing to really look forward to. And I want you to know, sometimes we get caught up on what we don't know. We get caught up and in our own mind, we allow fear to cripple us more than having no arms and legs when we don't see the future. And I don't know if you're going to migrate to the West or if you're going to stay in India and find a job. I don't know if you're going to stay in India and become someone like the chairman, Malaretti, who then makes an incredible mark on the education and leadership of this country. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how your future looks like compared to others. And I want you to know to not be hung up or crippled with fear when you're comparing yourself either with someone else or you just don't know what your future holds. When you look at your life, you might think that I've overcome all of my challenges. That is false. And it has nothing to do with having no limbs. The way that I've actually realized some things when we talk about attitude is coming to a state of mind that you do not avoid resistance. You don't avoid the rain. You don't avoid the storms in life because I'm going to tell you the truth of life. Whether you're a rich man or a rich woman or a poor man or a poor woman, you will not avoid storms and rain and different circumstances in your life. The people who actually achieve their full potential, let me ask you, do you want to achieve your full potential? Do you know that achieving your full potential has nothing to do with what you've been overcoming in your life? It's the mentality to understand that the only people who reach their full potential in their life are those who actually understand to embrace circumstances, to embrace resistance. Now, not to say that you accept the resistance. There are some things that there, you cannot change. Whether you accept having arms and legs or not, you can't change having no arms or no legs. But in your mentality, in understanding that you cannot change what you cannot change, and you cannot always change a circumstance, but you can always change the reframing of what obstacles are in your life. To the point that you understand it's resilience that helps you to actually achieve your full potential. What's interesting in the world, there are many scientists, bio biology that they're looking at medical science like never before. They're looking at spending of billions and billions and billions of dollars to make these even self-sustaining, closed ecosystems of gardens. There was this one where they grew trees so, so, so tall. And because it was enclosed, there was no wind. And you know what happened to the trees? They grew so tall, they became top-heavy, 
and because there was no wind, they had no good root system. And they toppled over because they grew so much. When you're a tree, you need that resistance to bring resilience. I don't run away from circumstances. I especially accept those that I know cannot change. But it's understanding what can you change? What can you do? What can you do your best in what you do? And I know when you're your age, you have so much stress, so much depression, so much anxiety sometimes, that when you go through your life, you're sometimes even surrounded with loved ones. Maybe your mom and your dad. Maybe they make you feel like, hey, you need to be the best. You need to do better. They sometimes don't even, I would say, focus on you until you've done something bad. I want you to know that I actually was raised with a very strict father. And when I did my best, though, and I did an exam, and I didn't get 100%. You know what my parents asked me? Did you do your best? And I said, yes or no, whatever the truth was. And when I said yes, but it was only a C instead of an A, my father looked at me and said, as long as you're telling me the truth, that you've done your real best, what else can I ask for? You see, I want you to know that not everyone has the same set of parents. And I want you to know that, yes, you must achieve your best, but you really have to do your best. And when you look at life and its full potential to change obstacles into opportunities, you must decide in your attitude to always do your best. You can maybe sometimes never try something because of your fear of rejection your fear of failure. And that failure, I want you to know that when you do your best, I want you to know that sometimes you will fail. And when you embrace life and you're a tree that grows roots, that's when you realize as well, failure, you heard of that word failure? You hate that word failure? You hate it, don't you? Guess what? Don't see failure as a label. Don't label yourself as a failure. Failure is not defining you today. You want to know why? Because the people where they understand that attitude is everything understands that everyone fails sometimes. Even the chairman, he is humble, he's extraordinary. He's a powerful leader. And this university is incredible, Vice Chancellor. It's amazing to see what this university has done. It really is. In three years, it's amazing. But ask them, did they do everything perfectly in the first three years? No, nothing's perfect. So what we must understand though is we must strive for perfection, strive to do our best, and see failure along the way, not as a status and not as a label. Failure is Nick Vujicic's classroom. If you see failure as not a label and not a condemnation upon you, failure is your classroom. And I want you to know that I still fail. I want you to know I still fall down. I want you to know that when you become an entrepreneur, can you turn me down a little bit, please? I feel like I'm yelling and it's too loud. Thank you. When you're an entrepreneur and you put everything on the line, it is really, really hard when something like COVID comes. When you look at this university and the difficult last couple of years that everyone's had, everyone has had ups and downs. But I want you to know that you are not defined by your circumstances, nor the seasons of your country, nor the seasons of the world. I actually really believe in the potential of India more than you actually think. And I want you to know I'm not saying it just because I'm speaking in your country. I actually believe 
that capitalism in America is actually closing right now. We are fighting for capitalism in America. The winds have changed in the West. I want you to know that. And I want you to know to dream even bigger. If you need to go to the West and you feel like going to the West, go for it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you want to know the most exciting economies in the world right now? India and Sub-Saharan Africa. When you look at India and Sub-Saharan Africa, the most incredible opportunities are coming to your country. Yes, Hyderabad is known as the center hub of technology and engineering and all these things. It's amazing. It really is. It's the Silicon Valley of the West. We know the amazing successes, but that's just one industry. That's just one industry. Was I correct on that sentence? Is that what the sound was? Do you have the photo of me and my wife? No? No. Yes or no? Sorry, I don't understand. Yes or no? Yes, we do. Thank you. I want to show you, when you look at your country, India, everyone say, dream big. Now say it like you mean it. Say, dream big. Yeah. Have you heard of a small company called Toyota? Yes? Have you heard of a company called Google? Have you heard of a company called Apple? You want to know how it all started? It started with someone with a vision. And I want you to know that I never thought, that's terrible resolution stretch like that. That's ridiculous, but that's fine. When you look on social media, you can take it down. Me and my wife, we met in Texas, Dallas in 20, uh, we met in 2010. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> oh, the boys liked that one more than the girls. That was interesting. And so I looked at her. She looked at me and I couldn't feel my legs. It was love at first sight. And did you get that? You can laugh at that. I couldn't feel my legs. Did you get that one? And we, we met and it was amazing. Um, and we, there it is. There she is. This is Kane. She's half Japanese, half Mexican. We call that Japsican. And uh, when I met her, it was amazing. I, I really never thought as a child that I would ever get married. I never thought that I would be able to, you know, really be a good enough husband. And I see all these husbands and I'm looking at them holding their wife's hand. And I thought, I can't even hold my wife's hand. How am I going to hold my wife's hand? And I can't hold my wife's hand, but today I hold her heart. And you don't need arms for that. And you women can have dignity and you can have absolute uh, equal opportunities here in a country like this. I want you to know that I respect my wife equal to me. I respect my wife as my best friend. And I want you to know that, that dreams come true. And if I got married to such an incredible woman, if that's what your goal is to get married, that's beautiful. Go for that dream. I'll tell you, though, one thing. Ready? Can I tell you just one piece of advice? If you think that you're going to be happier married and you don't think you're happy single, just make sure you talk to someone married. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're not happy single, you're not going to be happy married. Does that make sense? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's the same thing of why we think we need something or someone else. Now go for it. Get married. Am I happier married? Yes, I am. But I was happy before I got married because I knew the truth of my value. I knew the truth of my purpose. I knew the truth that whether I am rich or poor, married or not, barren or with children, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we feel ashamed if we cannot provide a child to our family. That doesn't make you any less of a human being. There are many children out there who need a parent. Me and my, my wife, 
Here's the next photo. We have now four children. And we have Kyoshi, who's nine now. Dayan, who's seven. These are old photos, but Kyoshi's on the left. Dayan's on the right. He's now seven. And the babies, we have twin identical girls. And they're now five years old. Five years old. And they're taller than me now. I'm the shortest man in the house. And I, and I want you to know that I never thought that I would ever have children. And here we are, we conceived biological children. And it's amazing. My son, Kiyoshi, he actually, thank you for the photos, you can take it down. Thank you. Kiyoshi, he told me last year, he said, Daddy, I said, what's wrong? He looked sad. He said, Daddy, I wish you had arms. I said, why, honey? He said, because I wish I could feel your hug. And I was like, <coughs> and I'm like trying not to cry. And he says, but don't worry, daddy. I said, why, baby? He said, because I'm strong. And so I'm going to hug you stronger and longer. You've heard that saying, right? The glass is either half empty or half full. What does that mean? It's your attitude. It's your choice. Now, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be okay. We all go through ups and downs. But even when your life is not good, my parents always told me, Nick, don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. You were not given arms and legs but you were given a brain. Use your brain. Do your best. I mean, that was strict. I went to the store and I said, Mom and Dad, can I have that toy? And you know what they said? No. And I'm like, why not? They're like, get your own money. I was six years old. And they said, figure it out. Can you say those words? Figure it out. Come on, say it stronger. Figure it out. You just got to figure it out. And so I'm going home and I'm like, well, how can I make money? And my parents said, well, figure it out. Do something around the house and then we'll pay you. And I'm like, okay. So my brother, he's taking out the trash, right? Right. That when we were a little older, he did more of that. But when I was six, seven years old, I picked up the vacuum cleaner in my own home. And I picked it up with my shoulder and my chin. And I would vacuum the floor. Vacuum the floor. For what? For $2 a week. And what did I want from the store? I just wanted some little matchbox car. You know what I mean? It wasn't a matchbox small car. It was a larger car. It was $15. So I knew at that time I had to work eight weeks to get that toy. It was the greatest thing. Listen to me very carefully. It was the greatest thing that my parents did not give me what I wanted, when I wanted it, how I wanted it. You want to know why? Because that will ill prepare me for the world. I'm going to tell you the truth. The world will not give you what you want, when you want, or how you want it. That's life. That's life. And those people who don't get what they want, when they want it, how they want it, guess what they're forced to do? Figure it out. And they choose the right attitude to look at their life and say, okay, I have no arms and no legs, or I have a little foot. And I love my little foot. I know you like cricket, but us Europeans, we love soccer. And I want you to know I love soccer. And I was playing soccer one day and I hurt my foot so bad I couldn't walk for three weeks. And I realized at that point, you know what? I can do something and I do have something. And I realized as I was saving $2 a week, it gave me dignity. It taught me, what's wrong? No cutting away. Come on, that's distracting. So sorry. Thank you. Cool, cool. We're fine because that's totally distracting. That's why they were talking. Because they know how beautiful you are. 
But I want you to know that when I actually was saving $2 a week over 16 weeks, this is what it taught me. Ready? To be thankful. Everyone say, I am thankful. It also taught me to be thankful for what I had and taking one day at a time. It helped me to set goals. Everyone say, set goals. You want to know why I am who I am? It's because I've learned that in no matter what circumstance or success you have, you always set short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. If you don't know where you're going, a man without vision dies. A woman without vision dies. For me, what was my vision? I wanted to do my best, and I wanted to make my first million by 25 years old. I want you to know that I made my first million by 27 years old. And I want you to know that in your life, you may say, oh, wow, Nick, but you were born in a country not like India. You're correct. But there are people in India who have not actually been able to come to a school like MRU, which now in tells me that when I'm with 24 presidents and prime ministers, and allowing policies nationwide to allow people in wheelchairs to go to school for the very first time. I hold that responsibility. You hold that responsibility. We as a citizen of the world hold responsibilities of making the world a better place. Do you agree? Do you want to make the world a better place? That's the greatest goal for me when I look at my life beyond getting married, Beyond having children and me and my wife even now starting paperwork, not just to have our four biological children, but to actually adopt a child that does not have a mom or a dad. There are 70 million people in the world who are human trafficked. 70 million people who are human trafficked. There are 25,000 people who died yesterday of starvation. There are 25,000 children dying of starvation today. And what I want you to know is my parents were not wealthy. My parents came out of communism, former Yugoslavia in 1962. My mom was six when the government came to their home and said, this is not your home anymore. And her and her eight siblings had to flee the country. Her father went to jail for his faith. My dad's dad went to jail for his faith. My parents fled their homeland and were refugees. And they fled the country successfully and they went to Australia with zero money. And they met in Australia and they got married and I was their firstborn son. And when I was born, I said, surprise. Imagine my parents talking about resilience, having to flee their home country and then finding new land and migrating there. And then everything seems to be okay. And then my mom gives birth to a limbless boy. And the doctors say, we are so sorry we didn't pick up his limbless state, sorry we didn't give you an opportunity to kill your child. Because we don't believe your child will have a quality of life. We don't believe that your child will ever walk. He has no arms and no legs. Well, guess what? Every single human has value and everyone has a full potential and I'm not, I am not here to compare your potential to my potential, nor should you, you create some measure of your full potential to someone else. In fact, I want you to dream bigger. I want you to understand if you ever want to start a company like Apple or you ever ever want to start a company like Tesla, don't you dare say, I want to be like Elon Musk one day. I want to be like Steve Jobs one day. I want to be like Bill Gates one day. 
Don't do that. You want to know why? You should be saying this. I want to be more successful than Elon Musk. I want to be more successful than Steve Jobs. I want to be more successful than anybody has ever seen. These are the people where they reach for the galaxies. They reach for the galaxies, not just for the stars. They reach for the galaxies. You have to reach the impossible by only believing the impossible can be reached. Period. Do you, does that make sense? It doesn't make sense that a kid with no arms and legs who now can travel around the world I mean, I've done now 78 countries. 78 countries. I've been to China 41 times. China 41 times. In stadiums of 100,000 people. It's amazing. I get to have one and a half hour meetings behind closed doors with presidents and prime ministers. I never thought as a kid that I would be shaking hands with presidents and changing laws in countries, and standing up for all the unborn and the born, that we all can have a full potential. And I want you to know something. You want to know what drives me? This is what drives me. Ready? It started when I was a kid. My parents said, no matter what you have, no matter what you don't have, you can always give back something. Never forget the poor, Nick. Never forget the poor. And at age 15, you know what happened? I put a beautiful photo of an African orphan on my mirror. Why? Because I needed vision. And I looked at that girl smiling at me every single day. And I thought to myself, I'm 15 today. The people at school are going to be bullying me, teasing me, rejecting me, not socializing with me. I'm a reject. I am nothing to some people. Nothing. But they don't know something about Nick Vujicic. Today is a special day. And I used to say to myself, no matter what hell I have to go through today, I am one day closer to making a difference in that child's life. At age 19, at age 19, I sponsored 10 children to give them food, education, clothing, shelter, mentorship. At 19, how many children do you want to sponsor? How many mouths do you want to feed? How many orphanages do you want to build? Let me tell you an incredible story about attitude is everything. Maybe you relate Maybe you won't, but this is one of the most powerful stories I could ever tell you about dreaming big. I had a friend. His name was Edson. Edson was born in Brazil. Edson's home was the size of half of this stage, and the floor was dirt. He had never seen a sink. You know the faucets? He's never seen water come out of the faucet or a shower. He was very poor. They barely got by. His father, his brother, his grandfather, his uncles, they were all shoe shiners. So they would go around and shine shoes. And they would barely make it. He started shining shoes at age four. At age eight, he crossed the street and a car hit him. He was knocked unconscious and there was a doctor who just happened to be there to actually save his life right there. And he woke up when he did 
And he said, wow, a doctor saved my life. One day I'm going to be a doctor. And he said to his mom and dad, I know that none of us have ever gone to school, but I'm going to go to school. He didn't even speak the, the, uh, the dialect at that school. He had a tribal dialect. He couldn't even communicate. He went to school and he got bullied and teased because he was the worst student in the whole school. He failed, 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 redid grade one, failed, 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 failed. failed. He did grade one a third time. And he went, good, 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 good. Grade two, better, 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 better. Grade three, all the way to grade 12. Over there, the last year of high school, he was the best in the school. And then he got bullied because he was the best in the school. I mean, get your head around that. The world's going to always say something about you. Do you agree? The world's always going to be picking on you. Don't worry about the world says. When the world says you're not good enough, get a second opinion. You know what happened? Edson, he applied for every single scholarship he could in medical school. And you know what was amazing? He qualified for an interview and they said, tell us your story. Tell us why you want this scholarship. And within five minutes, they were convinced that this kid is going to go all the way. He got a full ride scholarship. 14 years of medical school fully paid for because someone had a vision in his country to set up a foundation to give free education to some who deserve it, who otherwise would not be there. Are you with me? And at age 33, he graduated from medical school. He also learned business. He made a business deal with his friend. And his friend said, you're crazy. When he said, I want to stop my own hospital. He took his friend's money started a first hospital, and at age 63, he had some amazing success. 46,000 employees, 150 hospitals, 150 hospitals, a private health insurance company that made 5 billion U.S. dollars per year in Brazil. Decades ago, he was a shoe shiner in a house with no floor. Come on, India, let's go. It's amazing what's going to happen. You want to see what's going to happen? The West is about to wake up to the opportunity in India. The West is actually just about to give you Waves of microfinancing. The West is actually seeing India wake up to a whole new level of communication, to a whole new level of executive leadership, to a whole new level of understanding the West like never before. When the, when the nation comes at a certain point, there's going to be an incredible opportunity for your country, let me tell you. Let me tell you, this is the time to dream big. This is the time to dream like never before. I want you to know that there are some people who don't like me. I want you to know there are some people that things come out of my mouth and they don't like what I have to say. Not outside of America, in America. You heard of these social media platforms? Yes? Have you heard of being algorithmed and shadow banned and limited? Have you heard of this? They mute me because of what I want to say. I want you to know that some even companies in America, when you stand up for your beliefs, 
It's interesting, you get a target on your back. So what are we supposed to do? Just play the victim card? Do you think that I'm going to play the victim card? Have I ever played the victim card? Playing the victim card, has it brought me this far? No. Obstacles equals opportunity. In America, I was canceled out of a major bank because of my belief system. Get your head around that. Freedom America. No. They froze my credit cards. They froze my debit cards. They froze my credit line. I want you to know this is happening to many people in America. And the voice of freedom is interesting right now in America. Why do I say what I'm saying? Because I want you to dream big for a second. Ready? Ready? So when a bank kicks you out, what do you do when a bank kicks you out? Ready? You start your own. We are right now getting investment money to purchase a $75 million bank. When a bank kicks you out, you start your own one. Does this make sense? Does that make sense? I didn't do anything wrong legally. It's just someone didn't like me. And I want you to know that this is what I'm saying. You don't just overcome your obstacles to then get through your season of challenges in life challenges will come. But those people who are resilient, who had the great attitude, who were thankful for what I had and doing your best, you become unstoppable. My wife is from Mexico and our first orphanage that we are going to build is in Mexico. I want you to dream big. I want you to imagine philanthropy in India like never before. I want you to know that we all, more people in India can help more people in India. Yes? Can I tell you a promise from me to you, dear India? I believe that many people in India... Love all the people that you love who've left India. But I'll tell you right now that as a person from my parents' motherland, we never forget where we came from. Serbia is not as poor as India, but I want you to dream with me for a second. India, whether I come back in person ever again or not, listen to me very clearly. I believe that there is a great compassion for those who have less in this next generation. Your generation is the most generous generation. Your generation is the most empathetic generation this world has ever seen. Your generation is the most sympathetic generation the world has ever seen. And I want you to know my biggest dream of all. Can I share with you my biggest dream? My biggest dream, because I've been with presidents, because I've been with prime ministers, because I've been with billionaires, because I've been around wealth, and because I've been with the poor and the dying and the sick. India is one of 40 countries that I'm focusing in on for my largest dream of all. And my largest dream of all is simply this. Out of what do you have now? 1.3 billion people in population? Somewhere there? I don't know how many people left India. Let's pretend. I don't know how many. 100 million people? Pretend there's 100 million people who left India in the last 20 years. Does that sound pretty good? So what if we can get 2 million people who left India to give $2 a day back to India? Not just giving money back to family and loved ones, which is very important. But can you imagine, just for a second, 2 million people who left India to give 
$2 a day, US, that's $14 million to give per week in India. What would you do with $14 million a week? How can we think differently? It's amazing, the amazing nonprofits that you have here in India. I've been to a few. Let me tell you, I've been to a few. And I love them. And I'll tell you, I walk away crying in my heart because I'm like, I'm like, man, if they just had more money, they can help more people. Put your hand up if you want to change India. Put your hand up. Yeah, put your hand down. Ready? I want you to know that imagine if 2 million people gave $2 a day and another 2 million people gave $2 a day. Now we're talking about 8 million. Does that make sense? Sorry, that's 4 million a day. That's 28 million a week. That's about 115 million a year. My goal of goals in my mind is to raise up the next generation of business leaders to give back and change their country. And I believe whether you become a millionaire or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you can help one orphan or ten orphans, that doesn't matter. What matters is today, right here, right now. You say if you have a million dollars, you would be generous. Would you? Think about it. Would you? Isn't it true if you then have a thousand dollars, then you should mu you must and should ask yourself, how generous have you been with a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or ten dollars or five dollars? Because who you are, attitude is everything. You shouldn't change generosity just because you have more to give. You give more because you're a generous person. Does that make sense? Well, I don't have any money. I don't have money, Nick. Okay, ready? This is what I tell you. Ready? You ain't going to be generous with cash until you're generous in love. And when you're generous in love, meaning you look at someone here in university, and no one is less important than you. And no one is more important than you. That's love. Are you with me? Everyone take a deep breath in. And out. I want you to do me something. And I want to ask that the cameras are not on the crowd for this special moment. I want to ask you. Take your camera off the crown, please. Take your camera off the crown, please. Move the camera this way off the crown, please. Can someone just interpret for him? Thank you. My brothers and sisters, will you trust me? Will you allow me to do something that's never been done? Do I have your trust? Okay. I want you to do me a favor. In a moment, I'm going to ask you three questions. But I don't want anyone next to you to know your answer. So I have a way to do this. And no, I'm not going to give you my number and have you text me your answer. But I'll tell you it this way. In a moment, I've done this now 300 times. So trust me. Do you trust me? In a moment, I'm going to get you. Not yet. In a moment. To bow your head, and not yet, not yet, in a moment. In a moment, you're going to bow your head, you're going to close your eyes, and every single person right now, if you're filming on your camera, put those cameras down. I see about 25 of them. Put them down. Put your camera down. Good? Okay. Okay. Good. Turn off your camera over there, please. I can see you. Hi. Turn off your camera. Thanks. Ready? So with everyone's trust, it's very important you listen to my instructions. In a moment, you're going to bow your head, and then 
you're going to put your hand up in the air. Not two hands, one hand. Not yet. And when you raise your hand, you're going to actually keep your hand open. As I ask these three sensitive questions, you simply, if it's a yes, you put your hand in a fist. Does that make sense? Okay. Bow your heads, put your hand in the air. Every head bowed. Every head bowed. I can see every single one of you from here. Trust me, I've done this 300 times. Head down, head down, head down, head down, head down, head down, head down. Hands nice and high in the air. Nice and high. Open your hands. Ready? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask cameras. Excuse me. No cameras. On the audience. Good? Just... Can you trust me for a second? Thank you so much. Ready? No cameras. Nothing's going on. Keep your hand up nice and high. Ready? Put your hand in a fist if you've ever thought of literally giving up and committing suicide. Go. Put your hand in a fist. Yep. Open your hand. Put your hand in a fist if you've actually attempted suicide. Go. Open your hand and put your hand in a fist if you've actually attempted suicide because of bullying at your college. Go. Open your hand. Put your hands down. Open up your eyes and lift up your heads. Everyone take a deep breath in and out. Cameras back on the audience. As I'm closing up, I want to make a very, very important note. Thank you for your trust. I want you to know that this is an auditorium of 2,500, correct? Out of 2,500, there were about, about 250 of you who had thought of committing suicide. Out of 2,500 people, I want you to know that there were approximately around 40 people who had already attempted suicide. And about 11 to 12 students in this auditorium, half a percent, have actually, if I'm doing the calculation right, but 11 to 12 hands I've seen, I'm being very conservative, told me that they actually didn't like their life to the point that they wanted to end their life to the point that they tried to end their life because of bullying in the university. Do you think I'm exaggerating? I want to first of all ask you one more time. Take a deep breath in and out. Listen very carefully. I love you. I believe in you. I am sorry if anyone ever teased you. And I love you. That's first. Now turn to the person next to you and give them a hug. Go. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Ready? Ready, ready, ready. Take a deep breath in and out. Never, ever, ever hurt anybody. Love everybody. That is a quote. That is a quote of a friend of mine who has Down syndrome. He says, Love everybody, never, ever hurt anybody. 
do not ever succumb. Listen. Shh. Never succumb to pressure, to doing something or watching something just because everyone else is doing it. I want you to know this. Money doesn't satisfy the soul. Drugs is just a temporary escape. And it's a dangerous hole to fall into. Addictions, and you know them all. Don't let your brain go to something to escape. Or don't do something because someone's telling you. If you are hurting and if you are crying or crying silently, I'll tell you right now, talk to a counselor at the university. You don't have to fight this fight alone. You are not alone. And I leave you with this. From the very beginning, I told you, I am not a superhero. I still go through failures. I still go through ups and downs. And I still experience depression. I am the motivational speaker that goes around the whole world to inspire people. In February 2021, Nick Vujicic, who's spoken to 10 million people face to face and one quarter of the world, 2 billion, one quarter about hope. I want you to know February 21, I went through counseling. Can I explain what counseling is? They say, what is going on? What happened? And I share what happened. And they say, how did it make you feel? And I told them how it made me feel. And then they said, is there anything else you want to say? And I said, no. And guess what happened? Ready? Attitude is everything. My wounds turned into battle scars. When people do something to you or against you, attitude is everything, even in that. For what? To make the right choice to speak to someone. And if you've ever been depressed, I leave you. I leave you with three keys to get out of depression. Ready? Write out a list of 10 things that you're thankful for. Number two, talk to a counselor. And number three, go help someone else in need. I'll say it again. Very simple. Write out a list of 10 things you're thankful for. Go speak to a counselor and go help someone else in need. If you can do those three things, you see that you can make a difference. And you can make a difference. And you can make a difference. And you can make a difference. Do you know something? When I told my parents I want to be a speaker, you know what they did? They said, <laughs> no way. And they said, no, you go to school, son, and you do business degree. I said, but I want to be a speaker. They said, you know what? Finish your school. And if you become a speaker and it's successful, great. But if it doesn't work out, what are you going to do as a plan B? And I said, oh, that's a good idea. Guess what? I went into the stock market at age 16. I went into real estate at age 19. And I did a Bachelor of Commerce in financial planning and accounting. And I'll tell you right now, if I did not get my degrees, I would not have the knowledge to have the foundation that I have now today. Does this make sense? 
finish school, do your best, and absolutely reach for the galaxies to dream big. MRU, with all of my heart, I love you. Maloretti School, I love you, University. Thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for your welcome. Thank you for your time. And thank you for watching online. I want to ask you right now, get your phones out. Get your phones out. Can you give the slide, last slide? There should be a slide of me with a QR code www.nicklovesindia. Make sure the team has given that. But I want you to know, hopefully it's there. If not, tell me because someone's here who can get it to you. First of all, take a photo. I'm going to give you a smile. Ready? All right, now write this down on your phone. Write this down on your phone in case they don't have a slide www. Come on, quick. www. Ready? Nick V. Just let it be. Nick V. Loves India. dot com. www. Nick V. Loves India. dot com. I want you to go to that website today. And follow me on that page. I'm giving exclusive content just for India on this tour, and I want to ask for your comments on there. Let me tell you why. Me and my family we want to only give. We don't have a lot of money to give right now to India right now, but I want to plant a seed. We are going to give five thousand dollars to India, and I want to hear from you, young people. Which organization is your favorite organization that me and my wife and all of my friends from America, who could later give more money, but we as a Vujicic family want to give five thousand dollars, and I want to ask you, come follow me. You'll see some really cool stuff. It won't be on Facebook, it won't be on Instagram, and it won't be on Twitter. It's on that page. So please go there, follow me there. And I want to hear from you. Message me as you can. I just want to tell you, India. This was my fifth time here. Hyderabad. This is my first time here, and I know this is not the last. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nick. Uh, Nick, and uh, please give a standing ovation to Mr. Nick. And I request one and all. As a token of gratitude, please show the torch light and please wave as a token of gratitude. I request everyone to switch on the torch of the Aww. mobiles. Please wave and show. Yay! Love you, Nick. I love that. Hey, I want to get a video yeah. of this. Come up here, Jio. Video on this. Hey, can we tell the world never give up? Love from India. Can we say that? Yes. All right, ready? I'm gonna count you in. We're gonna say, "Love." Oh, wait, what are we saying? Never give yeah. up. Love from India. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Thank you. One second. One second. Ready? Everyone here. One, two, three. Love never give you. up. We're gonna say, wait, wait, wait. When I say one, two, three, say never give up. Love from India. Ready? Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Never give up. Love from India. We love you. Woo! Yeah. Love you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. I would like to thank one and all. Pranam to all lovable present here and watching the live. It's true, uh, Mr. Nick. Attitude is everything. Hence, positive attitude mindset with ownership is must. Where attitude builds connect. In our personal okay. and professional career life of journey, okay. it has been such an honor to be part of this wonderful event. On behalf of Malaradi University, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and the sincere thanks to your esteemed to our esteemed guest, Mr. Nick Vijayasi, a world renewed inspirational motivational speaker from USA, being with us in our hearts is always blessed. Thank you. Special thanks to Mr. Joseph. 
and uh, Mr. Sunil Robert and Mr. Chiranjeev from Nitya Welfare Society. Our sincere thanks to our Honorable uh, Chairman Sri Malla Reddy Garu, who is the father of education since decades. Sri Mahindra Reddy Garu, Dr. Badra Reddy Garu, Dr. Preeti Reddy Garu, Mr. Praveen Reddy, and our Dynamic Energy Vice Chancellor, Dr. V.S.K. Reddy Sir. And Dr.